Caltech is small, it is interactive, and it is fearless. We now can go from measuring individual neurons to a systems neuroscience approach to the engineering consequences of operating prosthetics just with your mind. The Chen Institute for Neuroscience at Caltech will give us that synergy, will let us do something special because we are now bringing individual talents together to transform the study of the brain. With the help of the Chens, we can do this at Caltech in a way that no other institution can. Our experience in the internet and entertainment industries showed us how technology affects human perception and behavior. We realized there is little understanding about how the brain processes and connects sensation, perception, cognition, and action. We chose Caltech as our first cornerstone partner for their strong research reputation, our shared vision, and alignment with the Chen Institute's culture of discovery and excellence. Understanding the brain is about understanding how billions and billions of neurons function in orchestras to regulate our thoughts and behavior, and that generates big data, which needs computational approaches to make sense of it, it needs theory to model it, and it needs new engineering-based technologies to measure it. This institute will allow us to do that and to show the world what can be accomplished by integrating those approaches. At Caltech, we are encouraged to take on risky, bold ideas. You know, we've been working on optogenetics, which is a method to very precisely control neuronal circuits, to activate or inhibit them with millisecond precision. And we hope we can have an impact both in the lab and outside the lab. The advance we've made at Caltech is to record from a more cognitive part of the brain so we can, in a fraction of a second, decode the intent of the subject and execute the movement. It's just amazing. They're sitting in their wheelchair and just through thought alone they're able to control a keyboard or a robotic limb. It thrills them to be able to interact physically with the world, and of course it thrills us from both a scientific and clinical perspective. We're interested in what's going on in the brain when people are making decisions that mostly affect themselves and when they're interacting with other people. We're able to, for the first time, see a wide range of biological and neural data of what exactly is going on when people are doing pretty complicated things. We measure changes in the oxygenation in different parts of the brain as people are solving these kinds of tasks and making decisions about what they should do next. Understanding the circuits that are involved in learning and decision making could yield fundamental insights into how these circuits go wrong when people develop certain kinds of psychiatric disease like obsessive compulsive disorder, for example, or depression. We have recently cracked the code for how the brain represents realistic faces. It turns out that the brain is just organized in such a beautiful way and unraveling this organization at ever finer levels, right, with ever more powerful techniques. And that's extremely satisfying. The Chen Center provided something every scientist dreams of, which is the ability to think about huge, big ideas that are really likely to be breakthroughs. The gift of the Chens will enable continuity, which is so important in clinical research. It enables us to do new things that normally we couldn't do. It will catalyze key projects for tool development for neuroscience projects, and it will also allow us to train the new generation of neuroscientists. In order to understand the brain, you can't do it with just one technique, like, for example, the MRI machines we have here. You have to combine across all of the different methods and all of the different spatial and temporal scales of understanding the brain. The big contribution that this new center could make is to really bring us together and get us to understand how these different systems are talking to each other. This is an opportunity to radically change the way we do science at Caltech, so that labs that normally don't talk to each other and interact collaborate in a joint way, and maybe not just two labs, maybe three labs or four labs, where each contributing different expertise could gain traction on a problem that the individuals could not otherwise access. 
the Chens and Caltech bring these individuals together to create knowledge and technologies that will help society for years to come, for decades to come, a hundred years from now.